morning, reader listeners, and morning one and all. And welcome to the morning show with your truly professor, Mr. Dwayne. Morning, Dwayne, what's up? Good morning, radio listeners, TV viewers, and live streamers. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here today once again. Unfortunately, it's my last week here because I'll be traveling back, but I'm on some good vibes this morning. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, it's been great having you here as well. And, uh, you know, of course, you're going to miss you, but of course, uh, we'll keep in touch and uh, and know with where we're heading. And yeah, you'll be back too. Um, oh, definitely. At the end of the year. Um, so, you know, you can tell us about the, ex- the experiences that you had. Especially because like next week you're, you're traveling to the United, United Nations, Nations um, yeah. Youth, Youth Assembly. Youth Assembly, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, definitely want to hear. De- definitely want to hear more about that. And um, before we get into today's interview, we want, would like to mention once again that the book of the week for this week is 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro. And so uh, that is a book written by J.A. Rogers, um, the re- same writer about the of the book that I used last week, um, which was um, World's Great Men of Color. And um, you know, I'm kind of I made a decision to kind of stick with those you know history books. Um, I might stop in yard where I mm-hmm. where, which really helped you know shape my mind and, and view about and change the perspective um, that is you know usually fed into us about African history, African people, and so forth. And so for this morning, we have um, two interviews that we'll be doing. Uh, we'll be starting off with a, a positive role model here in the community. He's a young professional, a businessman, and uh, we have next. Uh, which will be uh, an educator, a young educator, and basically, you know, what we want to do is really highlight, uh, you know, uh, those type of individuals, those who are, you know, doing good things in the community. Because of course, you know, we have a lot of different issues that go that goes on, but we have people um, working and, and doing good stuff, you know, trying to impact and, and um, do stuff for the community. And so we gotta also shed light on them. And so to start off, I wish our guests good morning, Cameron. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Good morning. I'm doing okay. Alright. Yeah. Um, so, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, my name is Cameron Hyman. I've, I was, I'm born and raised on St. Martin. Um, I'm a photographer by profession. It's pretty much all I do. It's my bread and butter, mm-hmm. as they say. Mm-hmm. So, what got you into phot- photography in the first place? It was pretty much an accident. I've always enjoyed taking pictures growing up, but pretty much with my phone or with um, a regular point-and-shoot type camera. Mm -hmm. But when I moved to New York in 2012, a friend of mine bought a camera and just told me I could use it. And since then, I just haven't put a camera down. Mm, I see. And uh, could you mention what is it that you study? You know, like is it kind of close to, to what you do now? Or it is a complete different, um, completely different. I actually studied, my major was public accounting, oh, and mm-hmm. my minor was in finance. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So from numbers to, to pictures? Yes. Okay. And um, I mean, do you still kind of have a thought for uh, finance and so forth? Finance, I would say. Probably mm-hmm. accounting, definitely not. <laughs> um, because of how I'm going to use the word boring, accounting became to me mm-hmm. is when I decided to take finance as a a minor, so I can try to not have to do the same tedious things all oh, the time. Okay. So I tried to get into the finance, so I can learn about investing and banking, so I wouldn't feel so trapped in the accounting realm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, with those experiences, like, you know, you decided to become an entrepreneur and, like, you know, take photos. So, what got you started on that journey? Before, while I was still living in New York, I believe it was 2014, one of the summers that I was coming back home on vacation, I messaged a local photographer on Facebook, Elvis Harrigan, Mm -hmm. and we met and we clicked. So before I came back home officially in 2015, I told him, I'm coming back home. I see what you're doing. And if it's possible, I would like to rock with you, like hang, see what you're doing, show me the ropes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that that's what happened. And we became really good friends. So that really introduced me to the photography scene here on St. Martin. And then in the beginning of 2016, last year, I decided that 
this was something that I wanted to do full time mm -hmm. because I would be at my day job thinking about photography. Mm -hmm. I would be at my day job scrolling at on pic mm -hmm. scrolling for pictures on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So I, j I just decided that um, if I can't focus at a day job and I really love photography, then I would just do that full time. Okay. Yeah, it's all about like you know following your passion. Yeah, definitely. So definitely. how was that transition? Because like you know you're doing a day job and you know that's your bread and butter, mm -hmm. and then now transitioning to photography might be difficult at first because maybe lots of people didn't know you at that time and mm -hmm. you have to get customers. So it was a hassle. So how was that transition for you? Um, it was. I guess I'm gonna use the word scary. Mm -hmm. What I did, I guess, having my accounting background whatever funds I made my first year, I really kept track of it. So I knew more or less, okay, so this is what I was making per month from photography. Mm -hmm. So I went into 2016 having an idea that I could at the least minimum make this monthly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was um, a little bit easier, but even to today, you know, some months it's still like, one month ends and you only have one or two bookings for the next month mm -hmm. so it's still like okay i know i'm gonna make this but this might not um break even yeah. mm -hmm. so you still have to to push and to keep putting yourself out there and market so um even to today it's almost still as scary month to month as it was when you started okay because um i mean this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you out here. Okay. Uh, because for one, one, I know it's an also competitive team mm -hmm. and quite a lot of photographers. Yeah. And um, and you're in an industry that is not um, like common person might maybe oh I mean this is it's a business as you mm -hmm. first thing you said when you started was it's your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. but people might think it's just a, you know a little thing that yeah. you do for fun and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the key thing is is one one you had to uh, take that risk that jump definitely to, to dive into it and really be about it and then secondly um it's a matter of being hungry and then the grind and the hustle mm -hmm. to 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 make it yeah right? you know and, and um in your i guess since 2016 deciding that you know you'll be a, a full-time photographer how did you prepare yourself also mentally or um in terms of the investments you make branding and marketing all of that how was that process like um it was pretty much, I, I don't think I did much to, to change from what I was doing before. Okay. I just made sure that at that point I was trying to be as frequent on Facebook, on okay. social media in general as okay. possible so that I'm making sure that I'm seen, my work is being seen. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure that I had a website up because sometimes you have clients who want to see your work, but they want to see your website, they want to know mm -hmm. that he is official. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that I had to do for sure was register and get a crib number okay. because yeah, there's a company who wanted to hire me, Discover Magazine, and if I didn't have a crib number, basically, mm -hmm. they could not have hired me mm -hmm. because they need that on the invoice so that they can actually pay yeah. me. They need to hire legitimate businesses. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of opportunities that I would have missed if I did not register my company. Okay. I think that that's a good point that you made, yeah. and um, and then when it comes to register, when it came to registering a company, um, do you have any challenges in figuring out, you know, um, how it, what, like a sole proprietor, a BV, NV? Um, the the persons, the mm. persons who helped me out at the Chamber of Commerce did really well in terms of giving me the information that I needed. Okay. So making the decision wasn't hard. Um, I know that I wanted to do a sole proprietorship because if you do um, an NV, you technically have to be making a certain amount so that you can pay yourself and it's a uh, little bit yeah, more structure. technical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to do a sole proprietorship because it was small, it was just me. So just to make sure that I do this and I get it off the ground. And they did say that if I wanted to turn it into something bigger, I can do that along the way. Along the way, okay, yeah. I see. And then when it came to taxes and all of that, um, um, 
the the month to month stuff i i have down packed because once you do it the first month the second month you get accustomed that you have to do it all the time mm -hmm. but this year i actually missed the deadline for the the annual taxes mm -hmm. because it i never did it before mm -hmm. but the the accountant who's helping me with that process managed to get an extension okay. so i'm pretty much good now okay, so yeah, yes okay, good. yes uh, like you know the way you spoke a while ago i noticed that it's just like you know just doing it like going out on social media creating that website yeah. making it official mm -hmm. but when it comes to photography the mo one of the important part is equipment yes so mm -hmm. like you know some people believe that when like, like i spoke to them they believe that oh you have to have like you know all your equipment like you know in the beginning just to start mm -hmm. how did you start up did you have like maybe one dslr or like how did you start with how many um well, when I started photography initially, mm -hmm. all I had was just a, a entry level DSLR. Mm -hmm. I had maybe two lenses and one light. But when I was coming into it full time, at that time I had already bought a professional body. I added more lenses and I had equipment needed that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whatever somebody called me to do, I was able to do it. But that doesn't mean that I was out there mm -hmm. just buying gear, buying gear, buying gear. I make sure that at the bare minimum, I had what I needed so that whatever anybody called me for, I was able to do those jobs. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can go out and get the, the pretty stuff that you like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for like the aspiring photographers out there, mm -hmm. what would you advise them to like, you know, use in the beginning? Any entry level body. Um, I believe that photography is more about the mm -hmm. the craft, the the skill, ha having the eye versus having the mm. the best um, gear. Because I have magazine publications that I got using my entry level body, so I think it's more about understanding that photography. Well, to me, I like to say that photography is more about capturing a moment than it is anything else. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have the ability to, to see these things happening and capture it, it doesn't matter what type of body you have, really. Okay. Very powerful words. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point mm -hmm. because also, like in it, you mentioned Discover Magazine, the um, mm -hmm. shoot that you did, I think that was, that was a, a, a great shot. Thank you. Um, Kishana. Kishana, exactly. Yes. Kishana. And um, you, you, your work has also been in newspapers and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, how... Do you go about you know, looking for opportunities where you can uh, you know have your work be uh, expanded much more? And I know that not too long ago, also you were in New York again, yeah. um, doing shoots and stuff. So mm -hmm. how is it networking and then just basically looking and getting opportunities? In terms of well, the magazine publications, I haven't done as much this year as I did in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I guess because the the structure for those kind of changes, so I wasn't really into doing it but in terms of locally um i have people in different places who appreciate my work mm -hmm. so if they have an opportunity sometimes they come to me or if they okay. see that i took a picture they they want to ask me if they if they can use it mm -hmm. um like charlie from the daily yeah, herald yeah. she made a joke the other day because her last couple covers in the health and beauty section oh, were my pictures yeah, yeah, and it's pretty much just coincidences that the pers the people that she chooses mm -hmm. to do features on i've taken pictures of them <laughs> so sometimes the the chips just really fall oh, in your yeah yeah. Okay, that's good. yeah so like being in this business for a while like you know where do you see yourself in the next few years um in terms of photography, mm -hmm. I think that in the next five years, I'll definitely be doing more of what I want to do versus the things that I have to do. Because mm -hmm. right now, at this point, whatever you call me for, I'm there. Okay. Kids party, adults party, funerals, weddings, whatever it is you call me, you need pictures, I'm coming because I need to make that bread. Right. But I'm putting things in place now, even outside of photography, mm -hmm. that in five years, I'll be shooting the things that Cameron wants to shoot and not just having to shoot to because, yeah, in, pay the bills. Okay, I understand. Thank you. And, um, and you know, what are the, I know there are various types of uh, 
shoots of uh, types of photography. Mm -hmm. So what are your ideal choices? Uh, my ideal choices in terms of photography would be anything, first of all, lifestyle based. So a wedding or um, family portraits, mm -hmm. things where you don't have to necessarily pose people because that takes away most times from the candid moments. Yeah. Um, like I have different tricks that I use even on my photo shoot where it's supposed to be kind of staged to get candid pictures. Okay. So if I have the camera, for example, on a tripod, I would set it, make sure it's in focus, and then I would leave the camera and talk to the model. And when I see that she's doing something, okay, she's really comfortable now, I just press the button. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's not like I was looking in the camera and, and she's then, feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I try to catch as candid a moment as possible. So anything lifestyle related, and I really love shooting fashion and beauty. Um, certain people have really distinct features in their faces, true, true. and that really catches my eye. So I like to focus in on that and capture those type of things. This may sound cliche, but it, you really do need the eye, as, as they say for photography. Okay. And, and uh, my, so my question is, how do you um, make, make, maintain that um, creative look? And, and, and be able to capture it and get it in photos that you take? I, mm, I think for some people it's just... Um, natural? It's natural. Okay. That they just have the, the eye to see how things play out and can capture those things. Mm -hmm. But I think it can also be trained as well. Okay. Because one of the reasons... Sometimes when people who know photography see my work, they're surprised of how long I've been doing it. Mm. So what I try to do in order for me to grow is, I only look at photographers' work who are like levels, in my opinion, ahead mm. of me. Mm -hmm. Like Mario Testino, they call him Mr. Vogue. If you see a picture on the cover of Vogue, there's a 75% chance that he shot it. Okay. So I look at his work and look at his work to the point where it makes me almost feel bad about my work so I just want to get better get okay. better get better so you can look at where you want to be and keep your focus where you want to be and eventually your work will transition from where it is to where you want it to be I, I like that the, uh, I like what you said because um, it really reminds me of a famous um, rap line I mean to be the best you gotta be the best mm -hmm. and, and, and you know so you Picking attention to what the yeah. greatest, the greats mm -hmm. of this era do their their shots, their way of doing things, and yeah. you look to uh, compete with it, even if you're not yes. on that competitive level with them. And I think that, um, from what I've observed locally, people have a a problem with the word competition, because mm -hmm. people think True. that if, for example, Elvis. Um, we're really good friends. Yeah. But, and if they hear me say that I'm in com competition with Elvis, they're thinking I'm trying to take his jobs. Correct. I don't want to see him do good. Correct. No, that's not the case. No. If he's the best and he drops a shot today, my shot tomorrow has to be better. Exactly. I have a friend who lives in Holland, Anthony Donker of Pop Arts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he does a lot of great work. I dropped a picture on Facebook yesterday. He inboxes me. I hate you. So he's going to drop something next week and I'm going to inbox him. I don't like you. And then, so we go back and forth. Yeah. But that helps us to grow. Exactly. Because you're always trying to outdo the other. Correct. But it's healthy competition. It's correct. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, just understanding that importance there of like, you know, looking at others. And it's a sense of personal awareness as well. Yeah. Like how often do you sit and like, you know, reflect about like, you know, your work? Because I know photographers reflect a lot. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, like, you're, if you're not satisfied about what you did, like, what would you do in that sense? Um, I think I, I can <laughs> tell almost as soon as mm -hmm. a shoot is over if I was happy with it or not. Because um, sometimes I do a shoot now, and I run home, and I want to put the pictures on the computer and see them on the big screen. Whereas sometimes it can sit on my SD card for a week before I take it off. Um, yeah, so I think you can almost tell if you're gonna be happy or not. And in terms of quality, um, just check your feed. Um, 
your Instagram feed, I think, shows you nine to 12 pictures at a time. Mm -hmm. So I can check this nine, scroll down and check this other nine and see if I'm happy with the last nine versus this nine. If mm -hmm. it looked like my quality mm -hmm. improved, do I look like it went down? Do I need to check something mm -hmm. like that? Okay. Okay. And like editing is important yeah, as well. Just, <laughs> so like what yeah. apps do you use or softwares like do you use for editing? In, on my computer, I yeah. use Lightroom and I use Photoshop. On my phone, I use an app called Visco Cam. I try to not, I, certain pictures, like when I take an outdoor picture, mm -hmm. they maybe look edited if you look at them on my Instagram, but I barely do much work to it. Mm -hmm. I hate when a picture looks really over processed. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at some of my beauty shots, as much as the model's skin looks perfect, yeah. that's pretty much her skin. Um, Let's see. If people have a scar, I don't remove the scars. Um, if you have a pimple, I'll remove it because you can wake up today with it, you can wake up tomorrow Sorry. without it. Sorry. But if I, if I have to reconstruct your face mm -hmm. in Photoshop, then if you're paying me to shoot, you fine. But if I'm working on a personal project mm -hmm. and I need to reconstruct your face in Photoshop, then I just won't shoot you then. Because okay. I don't really want my pictures to look like I'm recreating people. I see. Okay, that's why it's very important. And uh, also, of course, you know, as one, this is the bread and butter once again. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as a young professional, there are different challenges that you also face. And uh, you can tell us a bit more on um, you know, some of the challenges you face, whether it's the internet as we know, uh, and, yes. and, and, and so forth. Um, definitely internet. Um, <laughs> things that should take 20 minutes to maybe upload take two hours and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, even sometimes just being on St. Martin because Edsel Gums had a post on Facebook trying to figure out how can he get paid from PayPal. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. getting on Yeah, yeah. He, it, it's not one, two, three to do mm -hmm. here. Fortunately, I still have my US account, so okay. I can get paid okay. from yeah. PayPal. Mm -hmm. um, I believe even when I was creating my website, um, I don't think I could have selected St. Martin as a location. So my address for my website is New York. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so there's just, um, it's a little tricky in terms of, yeah. Um, there, there are camera stores here, but there's some gear that if I need, I have to order it. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere here that cleans cameras, that services cameras, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. So if my camera has an issue, like when I shot your first book launch, yeah, last year. I blew my shutter in, the, in my initial body. Mm -hmm. So I had to send it away and buy a new body mm -hmm. that I can use. So now I have two bodies, so I'm good. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get it fixed here. Mm -hmm. So I had to package it, send it to the States, yeah, wait for it to come that, back. That, that right there is well, a huge challenge because even in regular electronics that you buy, um, the store, for example, might say, yeah, you have warranty. Mm -hmm. But then you would have to wait sometimes four to six weeks to get back. Yeah. Place your phone, uh, mm -hmm. your camera, and so forth. And that, yeah. that's a hindrance, especially when you rely on these things. Definitely. Um, to business and to eat. And I guess probably that is something you can consider in their setting up here, you know, uh, uh, camera service, yeah, um, shop or something. Yeah, when it comes to expansion, that could be one of your niches as well. Yes, I guess that's something I would have to, to mm -hmm. learn also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. Not, yes. not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, that definitely. Okay, well, um, well uh, our other guest is, is here, so we just have to wrap up about four minutes left. Okay. So one more question, like, what do you have any specials out there? Because there are many listeners out there now. So, what you have? Um, no right specials now? at the moment. Mm -hmm. I personally don't do specials that often mm -hmm. because I think people like the hype of it yeah. more than the actual special. Because mm -hmm. if I post on Facebook today that I'm dropping a special next week, that post will get like a hundred likes. Mm -hmm. And next week I drop the post with the special it'll get like five likes. I'm just like, are you guys you happy serious? that I'm having a special? Or are you happy about this? Like, yeah, I don't yeah. get it. I and you. I've real, I realized the trend. So I'm just like, I guess you guys really don't want the specials. So I really don't do specials. Mm -hmm. But 
like I tell my clients, I I like to work with people. Mm -hmm. um, come to me, you tell me what you need and how I create my packages. I don't really have set prices, like a price list. Mm, okay. I know what I charge for certain things in, in the back of my head, but it's more of tell me what you need. Because um, okay. I can give you a package for an hour with six pictures, two outfits, but then you tell me, okay, Cam, I want to do three outfits and I only want four pictures. Mm -hmm. I can customize a package. Mm, okay. So that's, that's how I approach my pricing. I try to tailor it to what the client needs okay. versus just throwing out packages. And um, before you leave, I also wanted to ask you, know, how for you to also emphasize, because I think this is very important, you know, the, the, the creative industry, why is it also important, you know, here in St. Martin? Why is it important here in St. Martin? Because I think people, People learn differently. Mm -hmm. um, an observation I made, and it's not to knock anybody, mm -hmm. but a lot of the people who are police officers, really good police officers, really good coast guards, um, in those type of fields are people that did not necessarily go to the regular section of academy. Mm -hmm. They didn't go to the higher levels of MPC. Mm -hmm. They're guys guys and girls who went to the BVOs who mm -hmm. people thought weren't smart. And it's not that they're not smart, it's just people learn differently. Different mm -hmm. So I think that there needs to be a creative industry for the people who are creative. Correct, exactly. Because you, just like me, you couldn't stick me in an office behind a computer. Yeah. You cannot expect everybody to learn and do things normally. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we would like to thank you for coming through, Cam. No problem. I really enjoyed our conversation. That Definitely. Day. I wish you know, much success in what you're doing. Any final words? Yeah. Um, thank you for coming once again. And before you leave, just let people know your Facebook page, your contact information, okay. so that they can reach out to you. On Instagram, my Instagram is it's Cameron Hyman. My website at the moment is blueskiesimages.com. I'm in the process of rebranding and just using my name. Okay. And my Facebook page is Cameron Hyman slash Blue Skies Images. Okay. All okay. right. All right. Oh, well, let's say thank you. No and problem. To the radio listeners and television viewers, uh, do stay tuned. Um, we're just going to take a short music break so that we can get another guest settled in. So stay tuned.